Communications. And it is my great honor to uh, work with uh, up front here with Chief Woodside. Which, oh, there you go. Okay. Because <laughs> um, we have some very important uh, awards tonight. So if you want to join me down front. Um, well, this is first time for me. Um, first time for me as mayor, it is great honor that we are awarding uh, Purple Hearts tonight to five officers who put their life on the line for this community. Uh, I am in awe of what they do, all of our officers, every day. Um, it is truly life and death uh, when they go out on patrol. And we have had five officers that, in the line of duty, were disabled. And some have been able to rejoin us and some haven't, but they all deserve um, the Purple Heart Award tonight. Uh, it is amazing what, what all of them do. I, there is never a day, um, and I have the great honor of observing this personally, that they never play it safe. Our officers never play it safe. They, are, they run at 1,000 miles an hour no matter what to protect this community. So um, I... I just can't thank these officers enough, and I know Kevin is, or Chief Woodside is going to give us some much more detailed background. Thank you, Mary. <clears throat> it is my honor to be able to present five officers with the Purple Heart Award today. Uh, we have issued this award uh, twice in the history of the department, once in 2002 to Officer Mark O'Brien, and again in 2003 to Kevin Schreiner. Uh, that was the last time that this award was issued. So uh, in that period of time, there are five other officers that are eligible and to be recognized uh, by that award. And I'd like to call them up here now. Uh, Officer Tom Agos, Sergeant Jim Lang, Officer Matt Bauman, Officer Brian Jacobson, and Officer Scott Katerba. As they come up here, each one of them has an individual story about what took place that resulted in their being uh, presented with this award today. But rather than talk about those differences, I'll talk about the similarities. Uh, each one of these officers was a police officer on duty in the village of Gurney. Each one of them was required in the course of those duties to interact with a criminal offender and the course of their duties required that they place this offender under arrest. That person decided that they didn't want to be arrested and they resisted that and they became combative and there was a physical situation that resulted in these officers needing to overcome that resistance with force and with any use of force uh, sometimes there's an injury that occurs and in each one of these cases that's exactly what happened uh, in two of the cases the officers were out for several months uh, rehabilitation surgery not in that order um, in two of the cases, uh, the officer, uh, in, in one of the other cases, uh, in Sergeant Lang's case, he was off duty for four years, uh, rehabilitating and recovering, and was able to return to work just last month. And in the remaining two cases, Officer Agos and Officer Jacobson, uh, their re injuries were so serious that they were unable to return to work, career-ending injuries. So uh, each of them is going to be presented with a ribbon and a certificate. I've asked Deputy Chief Caldwell and Deputy Chief Kincaid to help me with that. So if you would hand those to them now. And I'll just read to you what the inscription in these certificates reads. They are all, well, first I'd like to read the, uh, the criteria for the Purple Heart Award. The Purple Heart is awarded to an employee who was injured or killed in the line of duty. The injury should be as a result of an attempt to take an offender into custody or the pursuit of an offender. The offender need not be the direct cause of the injury or death. The injury could also have occurred in the protection of the life of another. The injury should be of serious nature, such as a temporary or permanent disability or scarring that required medical treatment and or hospitalization. And the plaques that have been handed out here each read, this Purple Heart is presented to you for your actions during which you were seriously injured by the, a suspect resisting arrest. If you would please join me in thanking these five officers.
I'd just like to give each officer an opportunity to just uh, introduce himself and identify any family or friends that are here with you tonight. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tom Agos, and uh, my, uh, my wife is at home sick, so, uh, <laughs> but my son and his uh, infinitely better half, Caitlin, is here with us, uh, with us tonight. And I just want to thank the fire department, um, because the fire department showing up and uh, helping me on that day was, was significant, and uh, they were very good and very quick and very responsive. And uh, also the backup officers that were with me, uh, Officer Mike Young uh, was with me on that day, and Officer Brian Carey. And they, uh, I believe that their actions uh, prevented the injuries from being significantly worse. Thank you. I'm uh, Sergeant Jim Lang. My uh, wife, Robin's here, and my two boys, Jake and Connor. Um, I, too, would like to thank the fire department. They got me... Uh, on my injury, I went to the emergency room. Um, along with the offender, we both ended up in the emergency room. Um, but they, they supported me throughout this whole ordeal, and it was a long process, uh, four years. Uh, I had four surgeries, and um, I'm just glad to be back, and I'm glad to serve the community. Uh, Officer Matt Bauman, I'm here with my girlfriend, Michelle. I um, just want to thank the village and the police department for all their support, and uh, thank you for the recognition. I'm Officer Scott Caterba. I have my son Samuel with me. Um, I'd like to thank my shift for getting there so quick um, when I was in trouble, because um, they're always there for me. And I'd like to thank the police department for um, honoring everybody here because they all deserve it. Thank you. Uh, my name is Brian Jacobson. Uh, I would like to first thank my wife, Lisa. The past three years, uh, I've had six surgeries, and um, not only am I disabled from uh, law enforcement, but unfortunately I've been disabled from uh, taking care of my family and doing anything around the house, so she's really stepped up, so I want to take this opportunity publicly to thank her for, for doing everything over the past three years. I also want to acknowledge my daughter tonight. Uh, I want to thank her for her understanding over the past three years because her dad hasn't been able to participate in any activities that she's really wanted me to do, and she's been very understanding with that. So uh, I love you both, and I want to thank uh, the Gurney Police Department for putting this together tonight and recognizing my fellow officers for uh, doing the jobs that they do and uh, everybody understanding and realizing uh, what we do every, uh, every day and every night. So thank you. Um, well, again, on behalf of the Village Board and every single resident, uh, this is a wonderful turnout. Um, I know we had a lot of accolades uh, on the radio and in the newspaper, and the whole community uh, joins me in thanking you guys for what you did and continue to do for our community, and, and that goes for the whole police department. Uh, we do appreciate your service, so thank you. Thank you. 